What's up, everybody? It's Monday. How y'all doing? Okay, so if you haven't already, in the pinned comment in the chat, like right here, there's a poll. I'll give you guys a little bit to get on that. What are we gonna work on today? That's the question. I'm refreshing the page right now. Oh, we got a tight race. So I'll give like, oh, we don't need that again. I'll give this like maybe a minute more to get your votes in and then we will, we will pivot towards whatever the winner is. Looks like the chat knows. Hard math questions. What's up, Shiny? Check my email, okay. Subtract the slow mode interval. No. Why? Well, I do it just for the answer choices. But, ooh, looks like hard math is coming away with it. All right, let me let me show you guys so you you know it's real. Whoa. Okay. Here are the results. As they stand currently, we can see we can see that hard math questions are. I just refresh the page. It looks like hard math questions has it by eight votes. But I see you, grammar passage people. I see you. I'm not gonna forget about you. I'm not gonna forget. Maybe we'll do that later, but just not right now. We're gonna start with hard math questions. Okay, so that's enough of that. How's everybody doing? Hopefully really good. We're about to get into this. So for hard math questions, give me topics that you guys want to work on. I already saw someone in the chat, my probability. And then someone else in the chat wrote average. And these are gonna be coming from my brain. So I just need like, um, I just need some topics you guys wanna see some hard questions in. Geometry. What else, exponents? What else? Circles? I'll put that under geometry. Permutation. Revolutions, okay. All right, what else? The hard ones, okay. Uh, calculus, yeah, that's good. Um, 3D shapes is actually a real one. Maybe we will do that. Triangles, word problems, word problems. All right, that's coming up. I don't know how to do it. Maybe, maybe some of these will be a word problem. Maybe that's how I'll get it. All right, that's a pretty good list. What do you guys think? Are we missing anything in here? Manipulate expressions, multi-step problems, motion problems. I have revolutions written down. Ender pearls. <laughs> What is a motion problem, Alice? I don't even know what that is. Age game. All right. Got it. Inequalities. That's a good one, too. And slope. That's a good one. All right. All right. We got our work cut out for us. 
if you think of one while we are going, like, please, you know, add it to the list. I'll keep I'll keep the list available. Right over. That's where the list is gonna live. At least for now. It probably will move. Rate problems. Okay, that's that is one that we probably should do. Alright, cool. Big list. We have a lot to do today, so let's jump into it. And guys, you'll have to keep in mind, I'm thinking of these problems as we go. So maybe a little bit slower than just grinding the handbook. Just so buckle up for that. You're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to cope. <laughs> you're just gonna have to cope. Uh but let me start with probability. Let's go. Give me a second, obviously I gotta think of something. Right, this isn't really styled like an SHSAT question, but you guys will you guys will figure it out. Which has the greatest probability? Let me zoom in on this. What is the greatest probability? Rolling a dice and getting a five or six, then rolling a dice and getting a one, two, three, or four. The second choice is flipping a coin three times and getting heads each time. Which one has the greatest probability? Let's go. All right, we're starting off with an absolute banger, I can tell, because the chat is split. So let's cut into this problem and let's see what the insides look like, right? So let's figure out, B is an easy probability because it's, come on, Green, you can do it. It's going to be one, this is B, by the way. It's going to be one half, one half, one half. So this is the probability for B. And we multiply it because with each coin flip, the probability that we're successful goes down. You know, if you don't get that, that's fine. <laughs> Just ask in the chat. A is a little bit trickier, right? What is our first probability? How many potential winners do we have? Well, we have two winners. It's either five or six that we need. Out of the total number of sides on a dice, six. What about our second one? We have one, two, three, four winners out of six. So what we're going to get is 8 out of 36. We can reduce that to 4 out of 18 and reduce that to 2 out of 9. So that is the probability of A and B. 
Now, you might be able to just look at these and go, oh, I know which one is bigger, but I want to be sure. So I'm going to multiply this by 8 over 8, and what we're going to get is 16 out of 72. I'm going to multiply this by 9 over 9, and we're going to get 9 over 72. So what has the greater probability? All right. That's it. You knew it. You knew it. Well, let's cross it off. A little bit more definitive there. Okay. You did it wrong, but okay. Yeah. That's okay. You did it wrong, but still got the answer. Well, you had a coin flip. <laughs> you had a coin flip of a probability to get it right. So you really look at heads and thought one half. Oh, you, you, come on, sorry. Tyler equals math. Yeah, I do. I'm big pro. All right. That's probability. We're done. Next is average. Oh, that'll be a good one to do. This is going to take a second to think of, but I, I have one that's floating around my brain. So just give me a second to kind of think of this. Okay. All right, so here's the next question for you guys. It's an average question. So just be prepared for that. Let's get a little zoom action in here. Out of a 40-point test, Agliopina scored a 39. On the second 40-point test, he scored a 12. What does Agliopina need to score on his final 40-point test if he wants to have an average grade of 75% in the class? Let's go.
Okay, answers are coming in, and it seems like everybody except for I is pretty certain that it's going to be 39. But we'll go over the math just to show you how it works. Um, this 75% is meant to make the problem more difficult, not that it actually did, but keeping in mind, if the whole, you know, what is 75% of 40? 75% of 40 is 30 out of 40. Now, I could have, um, I could show you how to do that. Right, this is going to be 0.75 times 40. What is 0.75 of 40, right? Of means multiplication. Like I have three of these ice cream cones. Um, we're going to put a zero there so we don't have to deal with it. Zero, two, uh, 28, 29, 30, right? 3,000, but we got the two decimal places, so right. So 30 out of 40 is a 75%. So once we know that, we just need to know the needs an average of 30. And so remember that the equation for average equals the sum of the parts over the number of parts. So we don't know what the, I mean, actually we do know what the average is and the average is a 30. It's an equal sign in there. <laughs> the average is a 30. Um, what is gonna be the, the sum of all four? Um, the, the, what is the number of parts? My apologies is three and how many does he have so far he's got 39 he's got 12 and then he has x so what we can do here is we can multiply both sides by three i feel like my handwriting is disgusting on this problem it really is why is my handwriting on this problem so disgusting i don't know man i'm like getting grossed out looking at it but uh here watch i'm gonna redeem myself look at that there because those threes cancel out. That's a slick move that you should use. Um, 39 and 12. It would be, um, I'm going I'm to do over here just because got to secure the bag, guys. Right, subtract 51 from each side. That's our answer. Yeah, the chat was right. Really good. Really, really good. That's that's awesome. So good job, guys. I mean, I, I thought that was a little bit tricky, but you guys kind of shredded it. So never mind. Never mind. Maybe we. Will, I'll put it. I will put. I will put an X next to it, but I will not cross it out because we may come back to average. Just because I didn't. I didn't fool anybody with that one. And I thought that was a good one. I was like winding up. I was like, oh, this is a good one, but what can I say? Why are you guys so smart? <laughs> How close is the practice test in the handbook to the actual tests? Very close. Oh, shaded areas. I'll add that. I'll add that. Hopefully we'll get to it. Uh, no guarantees. Uh, geometry circles. Geometry circles. Hmm. Geometry circle. Hmm. Okay, I think I have one. And you guys are gonna get you here. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna actually put it over here so you can't see it. You guys are gonna get. You guys are gonna get a little treat, treaty poo with this one.
Okay, I, I think... Okay, I think my hand is, like, destroyed. I don't know why my handwriting looks like I was, like, karate chopping all night, and now my hand is dead, but that that's what it looks like, so... I apologize for my handwriting. If you need to go into the other room and throw up, you can. But um, I got we got to we got to push through the problems anyways. Okay, so <laughs> it's absolutely what a treat! What an absolute treat! You have a beautiful diagram with a pretty much perfect half circle right there. Um, a bridge covers a puddle that is 18 meters wide. What is the length of steel need? needs to be bent to needing uh, to be bent to create the half circle archway that supports the bridge in terms of pi let's go Okay, the chat is in almost unanimous agreement. Um, <laughs> nine pi. Yeah, you need to close the chat when finding answers. Yeah, for sure. Uh, another way to do that is to go back to old streams and to watch them and just fast forward to the problems and then just keep the chat out of the window. Um, but the chat's absolutely you know, dogpiling on this. So the midpoint of this bridge is gonna be nine pi away. That means that's what the radius is. And so to find what this arch is, we're going to find the circumference. And the circumference is 2 pi r. Um, in this case, the circumference is 18 pi, because that's the radius times 2. And then we have our pi right there. So, <laughs> so this is a half circle. So we're going to take half of that because only half the circumference is showing. So the archway is going to be 9 pi. The chat's absolutely right. That wasn't even close. Wasn't even close, dude. That wasn't hard. That wasn't hard at all for the chat. Was that hard? Can you tell me in the chat if that was hard or easy? I feel like I'm losing my edge here. I got to take off my hoodie. I'm like sweating. The chat's just so good, dude. The chat's just so good. What am I, what am I to do? Is there a problem that you cannot solve? Easy. I've seen easies in the chat. All right, all right, all right. All right. Easy. Easy. Pe <laughs> I'm getting easy peasies. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, everybody's saying easy. Damn. Okay. Let me see if I can throw you guys a little bit. Okay. Problem already doesn't make any sense. Hold on, let me start again. If you dig a 10 feet hole, how deep is that hole? I don't know, man.
Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. This problem, you're gonna, I mean, I don't know, man. Is my brain even in my body today? You're gonna have to tell me if this makes zero sense, okay? I have a feeling it'll be okay. Pepe is filling a circle yard with rocks. That's six feet. After 10 minutes, he has filled it this far. That says pie. How many minutes total will it take for him to, for half the yard to be filled? Let's go. For clarification, this says six feet, and this is showing that the area around where he filled it, or the length around the circle that he filled in, is pi feet long. Okay, the champ is back. I think I threw the chat, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm seeing a lot of different answers here. I'm seeing a lot of different answers. Chang's on 60. That might be the one to watch. Um, I'm seeing 360. I'm seeing 180. I'm seeing 120. 480 I, th I think I did it okay so let's cut into this guy so the key here is he's going to be filling at a constant rate right that's kind of what needs to be said I guess I should have I mean, technically should have specified it but come on so he after 10 minutes can do this much but how much is that compared to half how much is that well let's find out what half is right so as far as area is con or we don't even really need to look at area in this one which is kind of funny uh, but we do need to see when he can work all the way around the circle so we need to check that out um, the total circumference here uh, remember circumference equals 2 pi r and so circumference is this one going to be 12 pi and he has done pi of that right even you know i should even make this even cleaner so we need to our goal is for him to work his way all the way around to a total of six pi because that would be half right so we don't really need this left half at all we just need to focus on how long it'll take him to do this right half which would be six pi around and he's done one pi of those six pi that he needs to do so he's done one sixth of it because the pies cancel out yeah so if he's done if he can do one sixth of it in 10 minutes right how long is it going to take him to do six sixth of it well he needs to do that six times he needs to do that one sixth six times and so six times 10 minutes 60 minutes we have an answer that's it all right I've, re <laughs> I've redeemed myself from the from the bridge problem I've redeemed myself everybody can get redemption even even me even me can get redemption 
Can you re-explain the beginning? All right, I'm getting some questions. All right. So if it helps you picture this in your head, imagine Pepe walking around the perimeter, just kind of throwing rocks into the center. And that's how he's going to fill this. So he starts here, and he starts around the perimeter, throwing rocks into the center. And after 10 minutes, he's able to walk one pi of this circumference, right? That's like 3.14, right? But Pepe, he's really smart. And so he knows exactly how far he's walked in feet. And he also knows pi to the 10,000th digit. So he's kind of a spurg, but we love Pepe. So he's walked pi. He needs to walk to complete his half circle. He needs to walk a total of six pi. How do we know that? Because the circumference is 12 pi, which is two pi r. Here's our six, two pi r. And he needs to do half of that, which would be six pi. So if it takes him 10 minutes to do one pi and he has to do six, there's the second pi, third pi, fourth pi, fifth pi, and sixth pi. So it's gonna take him six of these 10 minute intervals to get it all done. The area here is useless, Rachel. That's a good point. All right, so now it's extremely crumpled up. Now it's not coming back. The full thing is 120 minutes, yeah. Yeah. Wait, why is the one sixth he did included? How many minutes total? So we are on to exponents. So give me a second, I'll whip something up for you. Fresh from the kitchen, you can smell it baking, hold on. Yo, thanks for the super chat. Shout out Justin Wang. Thanks, bro. Okay, so here is the next problem. Very difficult. Don't be stressed if you can't get it, but there is a trick here that if you can get would be very, very impressive. Oh, Vika, thanks for the super chat. Super appreciate that. Great to have you here. 
All right, let's go on this one. Yeah, techno dropping dimes on this one. So, this is a tricky problem. I don't know if you'll see something this tricky. This might be like an experimental question, but like being straight up, years past, this this was definitely something that could have been on the table. So let's talk about it. Uh, the concept you'll want to learn here is, let's say, if I have four plus four plus four, another way to say this is three times four. So give you a little bit of a clue. Does that scratch your brain a little bit? Because if I have two plus two, it seems like I have two of these. I have two of these two x's. And that equals two to the 15th. Now, keep in mind, any number to the one power is just the one power. Now, we've got to talk about how to multiply exponents. When you multiply exponents, I, I draw this chart all the time. I don't even know if it's helpful, but I love it, so I'm going to do it. So we have things that break them down. We have, we have uh, mathematical functions that lower or break down numbers. And we have, oh, I'm, I'm getting some like weird notifications. Hold on. Sorry. So we got numbers that break down or functions that break down like square roots, division, subtraction, and functions that build things up. They either exponent or you're going to multiply or you're going to add whenever you're dealing with exponents with similar bases for example there's multiplication in here you go to multiplication and go down one that's how you remember that so this is actually going to be since they have the same base two to the power of one plus x and that equals two to the 15th that's a little exponent rule for your back pocket keep that in mind so since the bases are the same we can compare the exponents 1 plus x equals 15, and so, of course, x is going to equal 14. That's the answer. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> I'm so confused. Will SHSAT be next week? Yes, it will be. Yep, exactly. This problem is not, but I mean, this problem is definitely fair game. And I have a feeling that they will put some hard problems on there just to throw you off your roll. They do that. They do 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 that. Next. Combinations. Permutations and combinations. Um, let's just kind of whip one up real quick, real easy here. Um, All right, real simple, real simple. Let's just wade into the water here. I have seven watches. I want to wear two watches. I don't care which order. How many two watch combos can I flex?
Okay, so let's see if we remember <laughs> what the formula is for combinations, shall we? Shall we? So the the real equation, if you really want to like actually look at the equation for like n choose r, that type of thing, what we're going to get is 7 factorial over, I'll do it down here, 2 factorial times the 7 minus 2 factorial. So if you have that in your back pocket, awesome. And that's how we're going to do this problem. Um, just to clean it up just a little bit, I'm just going to change it to this. Cool. And then the next step down here, let me zoom out a little bit, will be 7 factorial over, or actually scoop that, 7 times 6 times 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 5 factorial. These cancel out. See you later. So it's going to be 7 times 6 over 2 factorial is 2 times 1, so we're going to do that. 7 times 6, I remember this one. <laughs> it's 42 over 2. The answer is 21. Let's go. That's it. The answer is 21. Questions? <laughs> Are you guys like, is there an easy way to do this? Is that what you're asking? Hold on a second. Let me see if I can think of a way to explain this to you. That's a little easier. Okay. okay. So the easiest way, if you don't want to do this equation and you just want to finesse this problem, the best way to, fin and if you can remember the equation, do it. But if you need a little bit of a, uh, a trick, a little back door, just set it up like a permutation. So you're going to do that. Let's actually change this problem to 3. Or let's keep it at 2, actually. So 7 times 6. That's how we would do the permutation, because you have 7 choices, then you have 6 choices. But we're going to divide it by the factorial of how many we're picking. So in this case, it would be 2 for the factorial. That's it. And you notice we skip directly to this line of math right here. And you can do that. You can do that. Um, so for example, if this was a 3, 7, pick 3, how many 3 watch combos can I have? Then we're going to set it up like a normal kind of permutation, 7 times 6 times 5. But since it's a combination, we have to get rid of the repeats. And so we're going to divide it by 3 factorial. So that's going to be 7 times 6, so that's going to be 42 again, times 5 over 3 times 2 times 1. 42 times 5, 10, 21, 210 over 6. That's going to, I think, even divide. No, it's not going to divide too evenly, is it? Well, we can break it into half. So this is actually going to be 105 over 3. I think it is going to actually come out really nicely. 105 divided by 3, that's 3, 9, 15, 5. That's the answer. 35 potential combos if I have 3 watches out of the 7. If that blows your mind, we I, I don't really want to go too much into this because we really can get lost in the weeds. In the weeds? <laughs> We're getting lost in the weaves. We're getting lost in the weeds, so... Um, go and watch my permutation and combination videos if that blows your mind. But if it doesn't, we, cont we continue. We continue down the list. N times N minus 1 over 2. Does that, yeah, that's a good point, Vika. Okay, now you know about factorials. There you go, Salty. Um, yeah, Tech and Red Cat's breaking it down. Um, X in terms of Y. I can, I, can, I can do that, but you guys, actually, we might do that. We might do that. That might be kind of fun. 
We might ha we might have fun. We might do a little ge little algebra at the end, little little treat, little algebra treat at the end. Um, but we are on revolution, so watch this perfect circle real quick. Just easy. All right. So let me figure this out. How we can do? Um, it's been forever since I did this. Hold on. Yeah, that's good. Um, ooh. I hope these numbers work. I actually am not 100% sure these will, these will work, but let's get it. Using pi as 22 over seven, how many revolutions of this wheel will make it travel 33 feet? And um, just for, we're gonna be revolving it that way. And this is the road. This is the road that it's on. All right, let's go. And power, yeah, I do have a video for this. The reason we do these problems, Chai, is because these were in the handbook, the student handbook that Pearson releases. But I'm seeing a lot of people saying, Chai's like, I'm gonna go, lost hope, I don't know, no clue. Keep in mind, during the test, if you see a problem that's ridiculously hard, it could be an experimental question. So don't lose totally, don't lo totally lose heart, is what I'm trying to say. But let's go into it. With one turning of the wheel, like let's say there's like a, a piece of gum right here, it will take one full turning of the wheel before we get back to this piece of gum and it will travel the length of the circle. Another way you can think about revolutions and traveling as if it's like unwrapping the circle. You know, if we unwrap this circle, how far would it go? And that's how far it would go in one revolution. So let's figure out the circumference first. Circumference equals 2 pi r. So the circumference here is going to be 3.5 pi. We are using 22 over 7 for pi. So c equals 3.5 times 22 over 7. Now, some people might be able to make a really slick move here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to multiply it straight across. See that? Yeah, it's a little small, but you guys are good. 12, 0, 6, 6, 0, 8, 180. Did I do my math right there? Yeah, that's 6 and 6. That's 10. That's 12. Yeah, I'm looking, looking pretty good here. So that's 180. So the circumference is 180 
over 7. Let's see how many times 7 goes into 180. Hopefully it's clean, just for our sake. I feel like I'm messing something up. You ever get that feeling where you're just like, <laughs> I'm something, something's gone wrong, but whatever. So let's see here. Um, this goes in two times, 14. Yeah, something went really wrong. This goes in five times. Something went wrong. What did I do wrong? Oh, uh, no. What did I do wrong, guys? What's going on here? What is, what is my issue? 77, not 180. I don't know how you got 77, bro. 3.5 times pi, that's pi. 77, not 180, oh. Bruh. Having having that brub, see, you know, that's that's the, that's where I get the expert level from. Is I get that that spidey sense where I'm like, something something here went terribly 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 awry. Since when is one plus six one? <laughs> Am I having a stroke? <laughs> Am I just like about to like like shake and like foam from the mouth? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I didn't, I was like, something is going wrong, but. <laughs> uh, carry the one, that's 10, that's 11. We, we love, we love multiplication on the channel. Absolutely, absolutely. We, you know, we love addition. We love addition on the channel, we love multiplication. But let that, let that be a lesson to you is to never, never take for granted your own skill even in these like little dinky ones. So what we're dealing with is 77 over seven. This is trash, see you later. 77 over seven is a seven. So it is 11 feet around. And then how many times do we need to go 11 feet around to go 33 feet? The answer is three. So can we leave this problem in the past, please? Can we please leave this problem in the past? I don't wanna look at it anymore. Tyler, I got 360 for math on your diagnostic. That's the max score, is it? Is that what it said? I honestly forgot. I honestly forgot. You must redeem yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah. See you, Techno. That's it. You know, revolution problems or whatever. Once you know how to do them, it's like easy, right? Word pro I did the word problem with the bridge problem with the coin flipping problem. Can that be enough? Can that honestly be enough for the word problems? Wait, Paganini, you're saying this is an isosceles triangle? Is that really what you're, you're telling me right now? Because if this is an isosceles triangle, then there is no reason why we haven't solved this already. I can't believe that. All right, whatever. Uh, wait, I can't do this one. So age game, age game, on to the next. Let's see here. Tyler, Tyler, I need answer. <laughs> That's a promising start. When I do reading comprehension, usually I kind of understand the passage on to 100% though. I usually read the text kind of understanding, but at the question, I have no idea. Well, that's exactly your problem, Rebecca. I can tell just by reading your comment, you rush. You rush and you fly through it because you think it needs to happen at a certain speed, but you're not getting 100%. You're not. And so when you get to the passage, even if you have 90%, which is still really good for just anything else in life, that's not going to be enough for the question. So you really got to lock down the comprehension side of reading comprehension. That's the advice. Uh, Harrison, yes, but they maybe they, they're not guaranteed to be they're not guaranteed, no, to be experimental. All right, age game time. H, 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 H game time. So let me see here. Okay.
Okay. Here's a question for you guys out here. Here's a little age game magic for you. Let's just cut into it. Thinking of these problems takes so long. Rondi is five years older than Flexologist. In five years, Flexologist will be five-sixths of Rondi's age. In how many years will Rondi be 45? Let's go. And I see you saying, Paganini, that's an isosceles triangle. That's hilarious because I thought there was like a piece of the problem missing and I forgot that you had told me that. But now that we know that, we can, we can solve it. Flexologist, I think you mean rice gum. No, I would have said cringe if I meant rice gum. Hey Tyler, can we do SHSAT handbook edition? We did last week. We actually worked our way through the math section, and then I have a speed run for the other math section. So check those out, SHSAT learner. Now he's a low cow, but you know, rice gums, whatever. Uh, Rachel's on twenty. Hold up, stop the math, stop the math, stop, it's like stop the presses, stop the math, stop the math. I'm adjusting the problem because I, I wanted to, I'm, stop the math is all I'm saying. I'm going to adjust the problem here. Don't be salty. Uh, this is, this is what's going to happen. All right, this is what's happening. This is, this is important. <laughs> okay. Rondi is five years older than flexologist in nine Years flexologist will be five sixth of Rondi's age. In how many years will Rondi be 45? All right, start back up. I'm I'm sensing a lot of tragedy in the chat right now. I'm sensing a lot of a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow. Yeah, this is uh, it's kind of this is kind of par for the course for SHSAT because this is a high difficulty problem that uses basic algebra, and there's nothing in here that necessarily requires you to be in high school to solve. And so that's why this is like classic SHSAT. All right, please help me, it's too hard. I got you big gains. Get ready to be big brains. Um, this is hard, yeah it is, Proer. But we're actually gonna go into it. And this is actually, this is actually, I'm gonna hit, Jesus. The genius knows no bounds. We're gonna hit age games, we're gonna hit word problems with this too, because I'm gonna explain how this is actually kind of simple when you get to the word problem part of it. Rondi is. That's it. Rondi 
is five years older than flexologist. So flexologist is age plus five years. That's it. That's the first sentence. Rondi is five years older than what flexologist is. So flexologist plus five years will be what Rondi is. Okay. Second sentence. In nine years, flexologist will be five sixths of Rondi's age. So flexologist in nine years, his age plus nine will be, this is the verb to be, right? This is estar, ser in Spanish. I don't know what it is in French, but that means equal. So in nine years, flexologist will be five sixth of Rondi's age, five sixth of Rondi's age, but it's not just Rondi today. In nine years, Rondi is also going to be nine years older. That's it. This is it. If you're confused on how to get this, you need to work on your phrasing for word problems because that's it. I mean, that, that is the hardest part. If you can get this, then you're pretty much home free because we can do a little bit of substitution here. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to change this equation to Rondi minus five equals the age flexologist is. And there's a reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to substitute every time we see an F in this equation here, we're going to substitute in our phrase Rondi minus five. That's it. A little bit of substitution. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing too crazy about that. So we're going to rewrite this equation really quick. Rondi minus five, that's our F, plus nine is five sixth of Rondi plus nine. I'm gonna clean up this left side a little bit. And you know, yes, I'm doing every single step. I know people are like, well, you could just, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> trust me, I know. Okay, so here we have this. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by six. We got little brackets here times six just to get rid of that and just to make my life a little bit easier. So we have six R plus 24 equals, and then I'm gonna distribute this five. I know that's kind of a bigger step, but five R plus 45. I'm now gonna subtract five R from each side minus five R. R plus 24 equals 45. I'm gonna subtract 24 from each side, and I do know, know how to do subtraction. So R equals 21. Not our answer, not our answer, because I wanna know how old Ron, or how many years it will be until Rondi is 45. And so we actually just literally did that, but we'll do the, we'll do the inverse. So in 24 years, that's the answer for this one. That's it, just a little bit of substitution there. Ishmad says I, you did something wrong. I don't know if that's directed towards me or not. Yeah, that's how this one goes down. Tyler, for years, I've been wondering, is your intro and outro song twice as what is love? That is factual. That's very factual. But instrumental, yes. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> Yeah, just if you can get these two equations, is this the jump that is confusing to you, getting these two equations? Or is it the substitution for F? Once I solve for X, F, I can substitute it into this equation. Which jump really gets this? Uh, Salty, you have to rewatch this. Dude, absolutely, you can take your time rewatching it. And, you know, go ahead and put a playlist together of my videos and watch it, you know, on mute when you go to bed so my analytics pop. Tyler, may I buy your brain? Yeah, you can. I offer it hourly. All the work <laughs> under it. All of the work. Or you could just logically assume values. Yeah, if you're big brain. Very unexpected choice of song, but it's nice. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I'm not a K-pop stan at all, but like I, I do I do like choice cuts, I will say that. I finally caught up after being behind for an hour. Welcome back, Bob. All right, so let's keep moving. Let's keep moving to inequalities. I think we're just gonna do a little walk in the park for this one, nothing too, too crazy. Um, little, <laughs> just, a, just a little walk in the park for this one. That's kind of funny. Um, let, me, let me just make sure that it uh, works out on this. Let me just make sure it works out on this. Uh, that'd be...
Okay, that might be a little that might be a little good. Um so then it would be Okay, actually, I might have to rewrite this. Hold up. So, a little something, little something like this. Okay, that's looking good. I know you can't see it, but I'm enjoying myself. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. We're in the zone. How many negative integers can x be if 15 is uh, greater than 5 minus 2x, which is greater than 45? Let's go. Uh, twice does not claim the streams. <laughs> Wait, th that is a triangle. <laughs> we worked on it on Friday, Paganini, or on Thursday. Yeah, we worked on it on Friday, Paganini, where were you? Uh, okay, we got 15, 14, 15, 15, 14. Oh, I gotta actually switch this up. Sorry, guys. Guys, I you know what? I apologize once again. I gotta switch it up on you. So stop the math. Stop, stop the math. Stop the math. Put it into reverse. All right, because I gotta. I just gotta do it. I just gotta do it. I gotta be. I gotta be proper here. This is gonna be a negative forty-five. That is now a negative forty-five. We are now. We are now negative we are we are now in negative 45 okay this problem now makes sense um pearson's if you're watching start the video now <laughs> don't start it earlier <laughs> all right let's go Wait a minute, no, I didn't need to change this. I didn't need to change this. Oh my God. <sighs> All right, I'm not, I'm, not going to, I'm not gonna hold you accountable, chat. I absolve you from any answers that you put forward into the chat. I absolve you from any incorrect statements you may or may not made. So I do want to break this question down, but the way I had it originally was beautiful. I don't know why I, I don't know why I switched it. I don't know why I put the negative number in there. I regret every second. Now, looking back, I regret every second of that negative number. I regret every second of it, bros. 
So I'm just going to do this. Forget, forget this, guys. Just, just you know, just, re- just sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. Okay. This is a free. When I say it's a walk in the park, this is going to be a free walk in the park for you. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract the five from each side. What we're going to get is ten and negative two x and forty. Then we're going to divide by a negative 2 on each side. And when we do that, we flip the sign. So we get negative 5, we get x, and we get, that's a, we get a negative 20. Okay, so this should have been a negative. I am right. It should have been a negative. Dudes, what's going on with my brain right now? Like, for real. So, we know that x is greater than negative 5, x is less than 20. Can we just forget that existed? Am I going to just... Can we just, can we just forget that that problem existed? I, I tried to dance with that problem, and I fell. I fell on my back. I need a redemption. Thank you, Zach. Yeah. I need a redemption for me. I need... This, this one's for me, guys. Normally, I do problems for you, but this problem's for me coming up. So, let me... <laughs> Oh, I'm so mad. I'm so salty, but uh, you know what they say. Um, okay, this is going to be a banger. It's going to be an absolute banger. Okay. Hold on to your hats. Hold on to your hats if you can uh if you can't handle this heat, you know. Just exit out of the. I don't even care. Oh, by the way, leave a like if um, you like how honest I am <laughs> with my. Oh, see, I just wrote twenty eight guys. I need to. I need to retire already. It's time. It's time that I hang up my pen and I retire. I go out to the where they put all of the tutors who don't tutor anymore, and they and there's like a pasture and we just walk around and we talk about math problems and where commas go and we like eat the grass and. You know, in the evening, the, they all come out and they, they, they herd us into a barn and all the tutors hang out in the barn overnight. And, you know, we do age games and play deep mind. So <laughs> that's going to be me. They're going to put me out to pasture, bro. So let's do a little redemption for me, for my sake. Just because I, all I, all I, guys, all I wanted to do was illustrate this quality. And that is when you divide by a negative two, divide by a negative two. You just have to flip the signs. That's it. That's it. Is you just flip the signs and look at that. Isn't that great? Are we having are we having a good time, guys? Are we having a good <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Well we're not done. You know what they you know what the you know what they say, bro. You know what they say. It doesn't matter how you feel. You got to just do it. You got to just do it. And we got this list. I'm not going to stop until we get to the bottom of the list because that's what dedication is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel. You got to just push through sometimes. And that, you know, that's a, that's a good quality. So I'm going to try to illustrate it here. Let's do a little bit of slope. Let's do a little bit of slope here. Um, yeah, let me see if, let me see if I can get some coordinate planes up. All right. It's just like, um, yeah, throw that one in the memory hole. We don't need to, oops, we don't need to, uh, worry. We don't need to worry about that one. Okay, so. Mm. Might be too hard. Maybe. Hold on.
All right, coordinate plane, let's get. After the SHSAT, will I still stream? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm obviously gonna be here, you know, if you guys have questions, I can like hook you guys up with answers or whatever, if you're like stuck on something, um, you know, working with your school or like a test or whatever. But I also wanna go into um, history a little bit. I think I wanna do a little bit of history because I think it's taught really poorly. But it's gonna be casual, it's gonna be real casual. I will, I will tutor you in history. Sabaton, I'll check that out. I'll look it up on my phone right now, actually. <laughs> are you talking, are you ta is, it a, uh, is it a metal band, Shiny? You're doing Regents? No, but if you have questions about Regents, I can do it. Uh, Tyler, did you do a high specialized high school? No, I wasn't in New York. Um, what are normally on a midterm for eighth grade? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Depends on what school you go to. Check the public work if you have time. I will, I will, I'm excited. Have you heard of Ottomans or the Ottoman Empire? Uh, heard of it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I have. I, you know what, I think I, I think I do remember something about there being an Ottoman Empire somewhere. Now I don't remember how to do this. Big brain, you're stressing out, man. You can do this, man. Just have, have a little bit of confidence. Take a breath. You got it. Do you think I can get into Bronx Science with around 20 questions? Wrong. Depends on which section they're at. All right, let's get into this. So we know slope is rise over run. That's what it will always be. That's what it will always be. So how much does it rise? Well, I mean, I, another way to look at this problem, just in case you are confused, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where this will be, let's say this is y1, that's x1, just so the, these are just numbers to label them so we can keep them straight. So this would be like 0.1, this would be like 0.2, right? That's kind of what this is saying. And so we can just plug this into the equation. Actually, I'm gonna make this 0.2 just because it's a little, what, x2 minus y, why am I, dude, my brain is like destroyed. Normally the equation would be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, but whatever, I'm just like, I'm just, I don't know. So let's plug this in. We don't know, we're gonna forget this guy. Let's, we don't know what y1 is, so that's y1. Um, minus y, uh, y2, which is a negative 10, minus a negative 10, that's gonna be plus. And then we have x1, which is 10, and that's gonna be minus a negative eight. And we want the slope to equal two over one. So this is what the equation is going to look like right here. Just let me know in the chat if, if that makes sense. Yeah, is it y2 minus y1? Doesn't, it, guys, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna show you that it doesn't matter after the problem, but it really, it, as long as the ones are on top of each other and the twos are on top of each other, spoiler alert, doesn't matter. So let's go into this. We have, I'm gonna actually bring this over here. So we have y plus 10 over 18, and that needs to equal two. I'm gonna multiply both sides by 18, cancel that guy out. Y plus 10 equals 36, minus 10, minus 10, Y equals 16. That's it. That's how this one goes down. I'm having a stroke. Someone call me an ambulance. That's how you know something's wrong. You're gonna see me like, <laughs> okay, we're not done. We're not done. 
We are not done. We are not done. Rate. Rate is next. <laughs> rate. No breaks. There are no breaks on this train, Tariq. So, rate. Um, let's see. Uh, well, maybe do something kind of cool with this one. Maybe we could do something kind of cool with this one. Yeah, I think I got something. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Okay. And then let's say, okay. Um, so, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this is not another like hopefully this is not another one. <laughs> so, we'll see. Bonita is meeting Trashbot. If they start at the same time and Bonita runs 6 miles per hour, how fast will Trashbot have to go to arrive at the same time as Bonita? Oh yeah, I have videos on Slope MC, uh, Mac 11. Um, thanks, Savannah. Uh, links for practice test, uh, Llama search, SHSAT student handbook 2019 or 2018 or two, whatever.
Okay, I think I, I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm back. I'm thinking I'm back, guys, because I think I might have created a problem that threw the chat a little bit. Okay, I saw four. I'm seeing five point two. I'm seeing a six. I'm seeing a three. Let's chop this one up and uh, see. So. First off, we have to figure out how long it's going to take Bonita to run to meet Trashbot. Um, she has to go eight miles, and she's going six miles per hour. So if she's going six miles per hour, after the first hour, she has run six miles. I mean, that's obvious, six miles per hour. So she's like right here. And that means that she still has two miles to go. Now, it's not going to take her a full hour because she can go six whole miles in an hour. So it's not going to take her the full hour to do that two miles. In fact, it's going to take her two out of six. It's going to take her two out of six miles. So the answer here is going to be a third of an hour. What's a third of an hour? 20 minutes. So to get from here to here, it's going to take Benita one hour and 20 minutes. Cool. So we need to figure out how fast Trashbot needs to go if he's going to travel four miles in an hour and 20 minutes. So the answer is going to be less than four. It's going to be less than four miles an hour because if he was going four miles an hour, he would arrive 20 minutes before Bonita. Now, what's the easiest way to explain this? Let me see what would be the easiest way to explain this. Well, we can do it miles per. Normally do it miles per hour, but we're gonna do four miles, four miles per one and one third hour. So how many of that in miles per hour? Um, we have to make this into a one. So I'm gonna multiply the, um, I don't want to do this. I want to, man. I, no, you know my brain is dead when I'm not able to explain things easily. Like I'm, I'm about, I'm like legitimately, legitimately about to multiply both the top and the bottom fraction by one and one third, and that's how you know I'm like wilding out because this is way too complicated of an explanation. But it's what I'm doing. So what we end up getting is four divided by one and one third over one. So what is four divided by one and one third? Um, let me just bring this over here. One and one third, that's like saying four divided by four thirds. That's like saying four divided by four thirds. And that's like saying four over one times three over four. These cross out, the answer is three. <laughs> we, are, we are slowly but surely, we are getting to the promised land. We are absolutely getting to the promised land. Soon. Soon. Um, what's next? Shaded area. <laughs> um, uh, what would be difficult? What would be difficult? Um, All right, I think I got it. I think I, I think I got it here.
The value, uh, whoops, the shaded region is five pi inches squared. What is the value of X? And um, this little section is X over two. Why can't it be six for the previous problem? Six miles per hour? Because he only had to go four miles, dude, in an hour and 20 minutes. So if he was going six miles per hour, he'd be long gone. Yeah, that says five pi inches squared. That's what it says. What is the radius for the shaded thing? There is, there is that what's given is what's given. What do you think the most complicated topic on the SHSAT? I'd probably say like exponents. All right, so we're getting some answers in. Let's go through this. So what is the area of this huge circle? Um, it's gonna be pi r squared and our radius is, I'll go, okay, so our radius is three. So this is going to be nine pi for the big circle is nine pi. Um, we know that the shaded region is five pi. So if we were to subtract five pi from this, that means what's left, this inner circle, the unshaded region is four pi. So four pi equals pi r squared of the smaller circle. Now we can cross out these pi's because they both have them. We could divide by pi right on both sides. So four equals r squared take the square root, the square root, two equals r. So our radius is two. So if x over two equals two, we can multiply both sides by two, x equals four. We're home free, that's it. Okay, all right, <laughs> finally. <laughs> We're home, we're home, the last one. See guys, if you push through it, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel. Sometimes you just got to get it done. X in terms of Y. X, X in terms of um, Let me see if I can get, because this is going to be the last problem. So let me see if I can get something kind of slick going on here. Um, Oh, actually, this might be kind of slick. Hold on. This could be kind of cool. So. Okay, I don't know if you're gonna be able to write the answer to this in the chat, but we're gonna do, we're gonna do it none, nonetheless, nonetheless. Okay, 
last problem. Let's go. Okay, I'm thinking this might be a little too hard, um, so I'm going to adjust this problem to make it a little easier. Um, but it's you know the the same principles are at play, but without the foiling. So what I want you guys to do, if you're unclear, is to isolate a single x. I want you to solve for x. Let's go. Okay, so let's go into this. Hopefully that is enough time for you guys to solve this. So let me rewrite the problem so we can make sure we get it done right here. First thing we're going to do is multiply both sides by x plus 1. Like that. We get a nice cancel over here. We have to do the distribution of the y. xy plus y equals negative x. Now we're going to collect all of our x's on one side. So I'm going to add x. So we get x, y plus x plus y equals zero. We're going to subtract the y from each side. So what we get is x, y plus x equals a negative y. So here we are at this step. If you can get this far, that's great. The last step is, you know how we distributed the y to these two? We can factor out a y out of two terms. And in this case, we can factor out an x out of two terms, and that's called factoring. <laughs> x, y plus 1 equals negative y. So now we're going to divide both sides by y plus 1, y plus 1. And we get our final, our final, uh, our final answer of the stream, which is x equals negative y over y plus we did it bros that's it okay <laughs>
<laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to be back tomorrow. I'm gonna to be well rested. I'm gonna be ready to go. No more, no more just hanging around. But I will say, I will say, not to, to pat myself on the back a little too much, but you know, we did get through, we did get through, you know, we limped through, but we did get through it. All right, guys, I am going to go eat a sandwich. <laughs> See ya.